Hey guys, welcome back. It is Deer Camp 2019, and as you see, I am flying the flannel flag of freedom here, which normally means I just got here, which I did. Here's all my stuff, all ready to be put up. I got the wall tent, got my cot, got some camp supplies, I got a new sleeping bag here. This is the, the military uh, modular sleep system. Got my lantern there, it's my Franken lantern, I'll show you guys that later. I got my rifle, it's a Browning A Bolt 300 Winchester Magnum, this time with a Tacticam on top here, which has been doing really well this season. So, I've got to set all of this stuff up, and uh, then we'll be ready to hunt. Also, as you see, I got smart this year, I came out here yesterday and cut a bunch of firewood. So, stay tuned! <laughs> All right, and in just about 53 minutes, here it is, the finished product. We've got the whole wall tent set up. We've got our wood stove set up here with our chimney pipe. There it is. This is the Winterwell wood stove. I need to clean up the glass on that just a little bit, but it's, it's good to go. I've got my HQ issue uh, cot here, sleeping bag, this, uh, <laughs> this little... TV tray. I left this out here from last year, so it's, uh, it's a little weathered, but it's still good. I got a new chair that I'm trying out. This is an Ozark Trail um, backpacking chair. It's just a little bit over three pounds. And it's actually pretty comfortable. It is a little bit low to the ground, but it's easy to pack in. It's very compact. And it's fairly comfortable. Got my Franken lantern set up here. Now this is a lantern that I made. The bottom portion of this is made from a Coleman model 252A mil spec lantern. It's got a little bit more robust pump assembly on it and it's got this parts well here. You can actually store spare parts in there. And uh, the top portion here is from a Coleman 220F which is one of their more reliable models that they made. And I have a little sparky igniter in here. So, no matches or anything required. This thing has been great over the years. The best of both worlds. Got all my gear set up, ready to go. And you know what? I think it's time to do some hunting.
right, so this is a vegetable stew made with deer meat. My fiance very kindly made this for me before I left, and I brought it out here frozen. So all I had to do was stick it on the wood stove until it thawed and heated up. So, bon appetit! Alright, well, everything's all cleaned up now. I just stepped outside to throw out some dishwater, and it's pretty chilly out there, but here inside the tent, it's nice and toasty and warm. I got the wood stove going, there's a nice cheery flame going on there. It's probably a good 60 or 70 degrees in here. Now, you might notice I got a little bit less here than what I had last year. Remember last year I had the thermometer there that would measure the inside and outside temperature. I don't have that this year. I also had a big trunk full of stuff with camping supplies. I don't have that here uh, this year either. And that's because this was kind of a last minute thing. Uh, I did remember to come out here the day before and cut the firewood with my chainsaw. That way I've got a good supply. Because <laughs> that was a problem last year and the year before that and the year before that. But actually took care of that this year uh, and I also brought the wood stove out yesterday too because that's always kind of a pain but today I brought the tent and all the rest of the stuff I did have the poles already out here uh, from last year I've got an extra set that I keep out here and some other supplies too now, during the season I do keep the tent out here in a waterproof trunk so that helps packing things back and forth but, uh, yeah, once I get the majority of the stuff out here for the first camping trip, everything else goes uh, a lot smoother <laughs> all the next tri trips, you know? But, uh, yeah, I'm really surprised I didn't see anything today. So I'm thinking tomorrow morning I'll probably head a little bit deeper out into the woods since I was monkeying around here getting everything set up. Uh, I didn't want to go too far, pressure the deer too much this afternoon while they still may be a little bit spooky, but in the morning I think it's going to be time to put a little bit of pressure on them and try to get up on top of them. So, uh, I think I'll get the sleeping bag set up and try to get some rest. Good morning. <laughs> well, uh, it appears that the wood stove went out a couple hours ago, and it's pretty chilly in here. So, I'm going to try to get that restarted and get some breakfast going.
I have oatmeal and coffee for breakfast. Hopefully we'll get out in the woods and out to our spot before sunrise. It's pretty chilly outside. It's not actually all that cold, uh, but we got 100% humidity and it's kind of breezy, so it feels a lot colder than what it is. Yeah. That reminds me of last year and, and the year before. Anytime I'd mention in a video how cold it was, I'd say it's below freezing or something like that. And inevitably, I'd get the same comments on the video. Well, that's not real cold. Come up here to the UP or, you know, Canada or wherever I'm hunting, I'll show you real cold. No thanks, man. I, I don't want to see what you consider real cold. I've seen enough of it. <laughs> you know, I used to hunt out in South Dakota. If you were going to hunt the late season there, you were going to see temperatures like 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. <laughs> you know? I don't care who you are, that's cold. And I don't want to hear you guys down in Antarctica say 30 degrees below zero ain't cold. Come on down here to Antarctica and I'll show you real cold. 30 degrees below zero is freaking cold. <laughs> the cold in the south and in the east is just different than cold in the north and in the west. So case in point here. Uh, a couple years ago, back in 2016, I went down to Georgia on a quota hunt. And it was muzzleloader season here in Tennessee. The temperatures were going to be about the same down in Georgia, somewhere around 40 degrees. And, you know, up here I was comfortable wearing a light sweater or, or a light jacket. So that's all I took down to Georgia. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> now, I grew up in Georgia, so I don't know better, but yeah, uh, early mornings and late at night, I was wearing every stitch of clothing that I brought with me, and I was still cold. Georgia out of all the places I've been in the US and hunted is the most deceptively cold place I've ever been <laughs> in, in the winter time that's hot in the summer well, and speaking of that it works the other way around too you know we here in the south like to think that we've got the market cornered on heat and I remember a time back in 2006 I was enlisted back then and uh, I was in the Air Force and we were about to be deployed to Iraq and we were going to be attached to an army unit, so we had to go to combat skills training with the army at Fort McCoy in Wisconsin. Well, at the time, I was coming from Alabama. That's where my home of record was. And you know, this was you know, June or July, so it was already like 100 degrees down in, in Alabama. And we saw that the highs up there in Wisconsin were going to be like 80. So I thought, hey, this will be a nice little break from the, from the heat, right? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> that was the most sweltering, miserable 80 degrees that I've ever seen in my entire life. 80 degrees or not, it was just that sticky heat where the bugs just stick to you. And, you know, you walk outside, your glasses instantly fog up. So, so it does work the other way around, too. You know, heat is different in the north than it is in the south. Cold is different in the south than it is in the north. So whenever I hear somebody from up north talk about how hot it is, I just say, hey, you're right. But yeah, cold in the south is a different animal. <laughs> the same clothes that'll, that kept me warm out west, you know, when it was 10 degrees below zero will, will leave you pretty cold here whenever it's just right at the freezing mark. It's time to get finished up here and head out in the woods.
All right, back out of the tent here, obviously. And unfortunately, I have bad news. I've got bad news and I've got worse news. Which one do you want first? Well, I'll start with the bad news. The bad news is I didn't see anything. Now, that's not too unusual, but what is unusual is I didn't even see any fresh sign. That's very, very unusual for this area. Uh, the freshest sign that I saw was a, a scrape. It looks like it had been cleaned out maybe four or five days ago. Nothing more recent than that. So, you might be wondering what the worst news is. Well, the worst news is I gotta go to work in the morning. Yeah, I know. I got called back in tonight. So, uh, that means I have to get everything taken down uh, before we leave this afternoon. If I get it down soon enough, we can hunt this afternoon and maybe have a chance at something. So I think that's what I'm going to do. We'll have one last chance out there. Now, just to maximize my chances here, I put some Tink 69 on my boots. And I walked all around out there where I normally hunt at before I came back in. So maybe I'll get that scent in the area. And hopefully it shouldn't take longer than about an hour, hour and a half to get this stuff down. And uh, maybe we'll have some luck on the afternoon hunt. But anyways, it is what it is. I'm not happy about it, but it's a reality of the situation. So let's get started. Well, there you go. Camp is all packed up now. Got everything ready to take out. And I've got oh, about an hour, hour and a half to hunt. It could happen. I'll try to make this a little bit better. We got this clump of cotton balls here on the string. And I'm going to douse that in some Tinks 69 estrus lure and hope for the best. I'll also hit the grunt call a couple times too. Now, I haven't had any luck with a grunt call in many years and it's been probably just as many years since I've had luck using any type of scent, but can't do no worse today. So <laughs> it's worth a try because I gotta leave at the end of the day whether I'm packing out a deer or not. So let's get to it. So I'm going to call that a wrap. I'm going to head out of here while I still have just a little bit of camera light left. Pretty strange. Not only did we not see any deer at all, but I didn't even see any fresh deer sign. It's really weird for this area. And I got to leave a day early because of work. But hey, there is a silver lining. Two things actually. The first being that it's still really early in the season. It's just opening weekend of gun season now, so we've got plenty of time to try this again. And the second thing is that the family farm has been doing really well as far as deer goes. I've seen more deer out there than I've seen, well, in years. And that's where I've been hunting all the muzzleloader season. I'll get back to that in a second. So, I'm right about where I should be for this time of the year. I got one deer with my bow that you guys saw, and one with my muzzleloader, the small doe. You guys didn't see that one yet. And that's because I didn't get any really good footage of it. All muzzleloader season long, I hunted out on the farm. And I saw some pretty decent deer. Now, muzzleloader season is really short here. It's only two weeks long. So, my options were, were kind of limited <laughs> as, far as, as far as time to go. But uh, I did see a couple deer, and I got some footage of that. And I guess that's what I'm going to leave you guys with today. Is the uh, highlight reel for muzzleloader season because I don't want you guys to go deerless. <laughs> Not like me today. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 
here it is. Here's muzzleloader season out on the family farm. I saw uh, a larger buck that ended up being an eight-pointer, but he had kind of a messed up rack. He was real tall. He wasn't real wide. He didn't have very many main points, but he did have a couple kickers, which was really interesting. Uh, and then I saw a spike. Now I was walking to my hunting spot there and he was walking down the trail so I just ducked down and he actually got probably about five yards away before he realized something was up and he took off. But he stopped about 40 yards away and turned around and looked at me. <laughs> so if I wanted to get him that was my opportunity right there. And then finally I got a doe. Again I was walking to my hunting spot. Walked by the trail. There was a doe at the end of the trail. So I just crept up next to some brush there and I was looking through the brush at the deer. I have footage of the shot, but you can't see the deer in the shot unfortunately. And then after that I was kind of pressed for time and well that and some technical difficulties and I didn't get any more footage. So that's pretty much where it's going to end, but uh, here you go. shed a little light on this situation here. All right, <laughs> there we go. All right, so yeah, that was uh, muzzleloader season in a nutshell. So, and with that, that's all the time that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, thumbs up. There is a gigantic spider on the wall over here. Hold on. I gotta figure out some way to kill this thing. I'm about to shoot that dude. Look at the size of this thing. Look at him. You see him? It's a big spider. Holy smokes. <laughs>